In this video, I'm going to share some extremely useful tips that if you actually use them, will instantly make you a better player. The next time you step on the field, you will play better, but you have to use this advice. Now, before we jump into all these tips, I need to speak on a very important point, and that is the idea of your mind being open to learning, being open to advice, being open to criticism. If you think you already know everything, you can never improve. And not only is this video not for you, but this channel is not for you. Okay, so if you think you already know everything, if anytime someone gives you criticism, you just shut them out and say, no, that's stupid, I'm not listening to that, you guys don't know anything. If that's your attitude, then you're in the wrong place. But if on the other side, your attitude is, okay, I may not appreciate their advice, or I may not think that's right, but I'm at least willing to listen, and I'm willing to think about it and try to apply it to my game. If your mind is open to growth, if you're open to criticism from your coaches, from your teammates, and you don't take it personally, you just take it as knowledge, useful knowledge that you can use to improve your game, then you will improve much faster than the most skilled player who is shut off, who thinks they know everything. That player might be good for a couple seasons, but in the long run, you're gonna pass them in leaps and bounds, okay? So let's get into this. Here are some world-class tips that nobody talks about, and if you actually use them, will make you a better player the next time you step on the field. I'm gonna start with a tip that a lot of you out there probably don't wanna hear and don't want to agree with, but it is extremely true, and if you ask anyone who plays at the top level, they would agree with this, off the ball movement is more important than on the ball movement. What you do when you don't have the ball at your feet is more important than what you do when you do have the ball at your feet. You will be a more effective player if you focus on your off the ball movement because most players never even think about that. They just think about what they're doing when they do have the ball, okay? Did you know that the average player in a professional match is on the ball for 45 seconds to one minute in a 90 minute match. What are they doing the other 89 minutes? The other 89 minutes and 15 seconds, okay? What are they doing off the ball? And that's what I wanna talk about and that's what you need to start thinking about, okay? So like I said, what you do on the ball, it is it is important, it's very important. You gotta take care of that ball, you gotta be direct, you gotta make things happen but you're not on the ball that often during a game. Most of the time you're gonna be off the ball and we gotta talk about what we're doing when we're off the ball. Okay, so two things. I either want you to support the ball, get in good position to support the ball, give your, your teammate an outlet so if he gets trapped, he has somewhere to go, or you're trying to make a forward run so we can get into attacking positions and we can create goal scoring chances for ourselves but also for our teammates, okay? So when my teammate has the ball and he's dribbling up the field, a lot of us, we're just watching him. We're slowly jogging up the field or we're slowly jogging up or even worse, we're just standing there. We're just watching, okay? We're saying, hey, buddy, you got the ball. Go ahead. You got this covered. No, you need to get involved in the play. You got to get up the field, okay? And again, show for those passes or make forward runs or if he gets blocked off, we need to be there to support him, okay? Let's say you're playing as a center back and this uh, fullback has the ball here, okay? If I'm in this position, this isn't good, he doesn't have an outlet, he can't go backwards, what if he gets trapped, he's screwed, okay? So positioning is what you wanna focus on when you're off the ball. Am I creating a passing angle? Am I creating an outlet? Especially if I'm a defensive player or a central player, like the center backs or a defensive midfielder, am I creating an outlet for him to get out of trouble or am I screwing him over? Because my positioning, my off the ball movement isn't good, okay? On the attacking side of things, am I getting space for myself, am I, making runs, showing for the ball, or am I standing still and letting the opposing team defend me, making their life really easy, okay? So when you're off the ball, when you don't have the ball, I want you active, always finding new space, always moving into new space. When you, my teammates are going forward, am I making forward runs and I'm trying to go forward? If my run doesn't work, if I get blocked, I'm not just gonna give up and never make that run again. I'm gonna go find new space, we're always gonna be constantly moving off the ball movement. That's how you get involved in the play. If you're not getting on the ball right now, it's not because your teammates aren't passing the ball or your skills aren't good enough, it's because you're not active enough. You're not making forward runs, you're not supporting the ball, you're not switching up your runs, okay? You're just standing still and you're hoping for the ball rather than working on your off the ball movement, getting in good positions to ensure that you increase your chances of getting the ball. 
Okay, so let's talk quickly about the defensive side of things because when you're defending, you're not on the ball. Okay, and this is extremely important. I talk about this all the time, but a lot of us aren't doing it, especially our forwards. Okay, their team has the ball and we're just watching. What are we doing off the ball? Can we press to win that ball? Can we press? Can we close down these spaces? Okay, can I anticipate where the ball is going to be played and close that gap? Okay, so off the ball movement when you don't have the ball defensively, am I switched on? Am I thinking about, okay, the ball is going to come into this space? A lot of us, the ball's getting there and then we're reacting. Okay, you need to be think about reading the play. If you can see that he's gonna ping that ball, cross field like this, okay, I need to anticipate and I wanna get there as soon as he gets there, okay? So off the ball movement, defensively, think about your positioning, okay? Try to read the play, don't just react to the play, anticipate the play, okay? So can you work harder defensively to win the ball back for your team? Working harder when you don't have the ball. How hungry are you when you don't have the ball? Everybody wants to work hard when we do have the ball. A lot of us are willing to make those four runs. We might not be doing it all the time or as much as we should, but we're doing it a lot more than making runs on the defensive side of things. Okay, so think about the next time you're playing, what am I gonna do when I don't have the ball? Am I making positive runs? Am I always active? Am I showing for the ball? Am I making forward runs? Am I supporting the ball? Defensively, is my positioning good? What positioning do I need to be in right now? Can I anticipate the play and read where the next pass is gonna go and then get there? And then when the defender or the attacker does have the ball, can I close him down quickly and stay with him or work really hard off the ball to win the ball back for my team to be more involved in the play? The second tip I want to share with you, and this is so important, I see this in young players and even experienced older players all the time. How do you respond when you make mistakes? So say you receive the ball and you lose possession, what do you do after that? Or you have a chance to score and you miss that opportunity, what do you do after that? How do you respond? Okay, everyone makes mistakes. The best players in the world make mistakes. They miss five yard sitters. They miss three yard simple passes. But what's important is how do you respond? Okay, most players, as soon as they make a mistake, head is down, shoulders are down, body language is down, their negative self-talk's going off, everyone else is getting on them, like, come on, man, what are you doing? Get yourself together, and they just go down and down and down and down. Okay, the only time they play well is if they make no mistakes. What happens when you make a mistake? You need to respond positively. If I get on the ball and I lose possession of the ball, Okay, I shake it off right away. First of all, I go chase that ball down right away. I win it back for my team, then I get it, then I play simple. Then I focus on my first touch a lot better next time. I focus on taking care of the ball, playing those simple passes, and I work myself into the game. Okay, if you miss an easy goal scoring chance or a difficult goal scoring chance, you just miss a chance, okay? Most players after that, they don't want another chance because they're afraid they're gonna miss or they don't want to even make the run to get in front of the net because they know they might miss that opportunity. If you miss a goal scoring opportunity, you need to be hungry for the next one because you know you're gonna get it, okay? It's all about this positive response. Everyone makes mistakes, but very few players respond positively. And if you can start responding positively after you make your mistakes, get over it, learn from it, get on to the next one. You're gonna be a much better player and you're gonna stay involved in the game. What happens is most players make mistakes and then they slowly disappear from the game. Because again, they're afraid to get on the ball, they're afraid to make more mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Making mistakes is part of the game, everyone does it. And when other people, your teammates yell at you for making mistakes, don't take it personally, okay? Because they're gonna do the same thing five minutes later and you're not gonna yell at them. You're gonna encourage them. You're gonna motivate them. And then the next time, maybe they won't do that to you. Okay, but if you make a mistake, let's say for example, you lose possession of the ball. You're dribbling, you get tackled, you lose possession of the ball. Or you receive the ball, you have a bad touch, you lose possession of the ball. I want you to chase that ball down, win it back right away, get that ball, play simple. Then as soon as the next play, the next opportunity, I want you to go searching for that ball. Get the ball again, ask for the ball, demand the ball, okay? Even if I screw up 10 times in a row, I'm gonna go 10 more times and search for that ball, get that ball on my feet, and I'm gonna play simple, play myself into the game, okay? So ask yourself, currently, how am I responding after I make mistakes, after I lose possession, after I make a bad pass, or after I miss a scoring opportunity? Does my head go down, do my shoulders go down? Do I talk negatively to myself, tell myself I'm no good, why would you miss a chance like that? Or do I pump myself up, shake it off, learn from it, and go searching for the next opportunity? The next tip is move the damn ball. Move this thing right here. Let the ball do the work. And I'm talking mainly 
to my really talented, skilled, technical players because I find these are always the players who are taking too long on the ball. Yes, there's the type of player who's just, they're a bit slow, they're a bit nervous, their touches aren't the best, their decision making's not the sharpest, and they're playing too slow, okay? They need to play a bit quicker to receive that ball, pass that ball, move and get it back. But it's our talented players who are having the most problem with this idea. It's because you have all the skill. Okay, and you need to be honest with yourself. Are you this type of player? Are you making this mistake? Because they have so much skill, because they have so much talent and ability, they want to show that off every time they get the ball. They want to impress their coaches, their teammates. They want to show their skill and they want to use it to create chances. But the truth is, these players are taking way too many touches. And honestly, I love defending that type of player. I love coming up against that player. Anytime that player gets the ball, I love just pressing them quickly, clipping at their ankles, going in hard to tackles and winning the ball. Because they think they're, because they have so much skill, they have to show it off, like I said, and they take too many touches. They're on the ball way too long. Okay, my defender might come to press them and then I just get in there right away. And what happens is they lose the ball, they do it again, they lose the ball, their teammates start yelling at them, getting down on them, they start getting frustrated with themselves, head goes down, and they just play worse and worse and worse, okay? But the truth is, this player is way easier to defend than the player who really keeps it simple. This guy here always plays two touch, he doesn't have as good of skill, but when he's on the ball, he just gets it, he moves it, he moves into space. This guy's way harder to defend than this guy who has all the skill in the world, but he takes too many touches and he takes way too long to make decisions, okay? If you're a skilled player, you need to move the ball even quicker. You will have chances to use your skill, okay? But that's gonna come from playing quickly. So say I receive the ball in here. Receive, pass, find new space. Get that ball, turn. Play that ball, find new space. Suddenly you'll pop up and now I have space to attack. Now I can take a couple touches. Now I can cut inside, get my shot on goal. Okay, there will be times for you to use your skill, but you need to understand when to do that and when to not. And mainly in the defensive third, in the middle third, if it's in really tight areas here, I got defenders around me, you need to move that ball, okay? Have a focus on having a really good first touch, move that ball, then get into new space. Turn, good first touch, move that ball. Can you play two touch, move that ball, move that ball, move that ball, move that ball, so important. The next time you watch professional football, I want you to count the amount of touches each player takes on the field. When they do take multiple touches, I want you to think about what situations or what areas they're in, okay? Did they pick it up on the wing and they had tons of space and they didn't just take 10 touches, they took 10 touches but they sprinted up the field, cut inside and then laid off a pass or cut inside and whipped across or cut inside and took a shot, okay? There will be times for you to use your skill when there's open space to exploit, when you're one-on-one -on -one and you just have to beat one guy to get a shot off, okay? But the majority of the time, watch professional football, count the amount of touches they take, and watch how fast that ball moves around the field, okay? If you're a talented player, you're a skilled player, realize you're gonna get more of the ball if you move it quicker. If you take 10 touches every time you have the ball, no one's gonna wanna pass you the ball because you're a ball hog. Okay, so move that ball quicker, let the ball do the work. When you get it, pass it, move to get it back, and you're gonna be surprised at how much more you get on the ball, how much more you get on the ball, how much more you are involved in the play. And when you do have your space, yes, feel free to take those touches, use your skills in those dangerous areas. Okay, but the majority of the time, move that damn ball. I wanna talk about a very important idea and I used to do this a lot when I was younger and I see players do this all the time, is you slowly disappear from the game. You might start the game really well, like you're really involved, you're on the ball, you're making runs, you're getting involved, you're playing really well, and then as the game progresses, 20th minute, you're getting a little less on the ball, 30th minute, a little less, 40th minute, you're nowhere to be found. Second half starts, you might start well again, five, 10 minutes is good, you're sharp, you're on the ball, you're getting involved, and then slowly 70th, 80th, 90th, you're nowhere to be found. You haven't touched the ball, you're not involved in the play, you're not making any tackles, you're not contributing. Okay, so in order for you to stay involved in the play for the whole game, you need to do a couple things and it starts right here in your mind, keeping focused. Okay, if you're not focused on your movement, on what you're doing, 
and noticing, okay, I haven't touched the ball in a little bit. I need to change what I'm doing. I can't make the same runs. I can't stay in the same spot. I need to change things up. I need to be more active. I need to get myself involved in the game. Okay, so try to keep a mental tab. Am I involved in the game right now? If not, I need to change that because you'll find, again, it, usually when you're starting the game, you got lots of energy, you're working hard off the ball, you're chasing guys down, you're getting involved, you're demanding the ball, and then as you get a little bit tired and tired and tired, you slowly slip out of the game, okay? So you need to, number one, ask yourself mentally, am I involved enough? Am I getting involved in the play? So keep your focus on being involved in the play. Couple things I want you to do. Number one, go searching for the ball. If the ball's not coming to you, don't expect Don't expect your teammates to find you. You gotta go searching. Sometimes you gotta change up your runs. Say if I'm playing a striker, I might have to drop a bit deeper into the midfield to pick the ball up. Or if I'm out on the wing, I might have to come inside to get that ball. Okay, go searching for that ball. Get out of your position a little bit. I would much rather you be out of position and get on the ball than stay in your position out there on the wing and never be involved, okay? Your coach might not agree with that, but personally, I think you as a player, you need to be involved as much as you can. And there will be times when you're staying really wide and you will get involved because you're demanding the ball, you're getting your width early, you're creating space for yourself, and you're getting on the ball. But if you're not getting the ball, do something about it. Don't make the same run, switch it up, okay? Go searching for that ball. On the other side of things, if you're not getting involved, I want you to go hunting for the ball. And what I mean by hunting is on the defensive side of things, okay? Start anticipating the play. When their team has the ball, they're moving it around. Can you anticipate where the next pass is gonna go? And then go hunting for that ball. And when I say hunt, that doesn't mean you're jogging slowly to get that ball. You're sprinting after that ball. You're chasing, you're pressuring that guy. You're forcing him to make a mistake. You win the ball back for your team. And then you either exploit the open space that's given to you, or you get that ball, you move that ball, and then you start playing those little passes, getting moving around. Again, go searching for the ball, get involved in the play. Okay, so number one, Mentally, ask yourself, am I involved enough? No, I need to do something about it, I need to switch it up. I need to stay mentally focused, but I need to stay physically focused and involved with my movement, okay? Second, go searching for the ball. When your team has the ball, go searching. Find new pockets of space. Don't always make the same run. Definitely don't stand still, because no one's gonna give you the ball, but switch your runs up so you can search for the ball, get that ball at your feet, then play those little passes, combination play, get involved in the play. And finally, probably the best thing you can do if you're not getting the ball is work harder defensively, go hunting for that ball okay can you chase defenders down can you chase midfielders down when your defender is closing someone can you come and double okay can you go hunting for that ball win that ball defensively and you're gonna get way more involved in the play okay so think about those things think about being involved for the whole game extremely important this tip will absolutely transform the way you play if you actually use it it does work it's an extremely simple piece of advice but it's so powerful and that is i want you to be extremely direct what does that mean that doesn't mean i'm just going to kick the ball up the field direct as in going one pass to beat everything i'm still trying to play nice football i'm still trying to keep possession and move the ball but whenever I have space, I'm trying to attack. You need to score goals to win the game. Okay, if I'm always getting the ball and going backwards, I'm never gonna score goals. So whenever you can, ask yourself, get a sh head, uh, shoulder check, look over your shoulder, is there space? Get turned, can we play forward, can we move forward? Play forward, move forward, play forward, move forward. Whenever I get the ball, I'm trying to attack. I'm trying to be extremely direct. If they're not gonna close me down, if they're giving me all this space, I'm not gonna get my head up realize there's space and then jog into this space, okay? I already know there's space. I receive the ball, my first touch is into space. I sprint at that net. If nobody closes me down, I just score the goal, celebrate and win the game for my team, okay? Most of us, we're getting the ball. Like I said, we're getting turned. Now we got our head up. Now we realize there's place, space. We're still a bit hesitant. We're still looking for a pass rather than going for it and being extremely direct, okay? So the next time you play, I want you to think about if I have space, I'm always gonna take my first touch into space, towards the net, okay? If I have a teammate who's open in space, I'm gonna get him that ball as soon as possible. If you were out here and you were in this, or if someone was out here and you were in this position and you were in open space, you wouldn't want him to take a couple touches, dribble up, and then make a decision. You would want him to get you that ball right away, okay? So when you're on the ball, ask yourself, can I play forward and then join in the attack? Or, if there's no passing options, 
Can I dribble forward and be very direct? Either get to the sideline and whip across or get in the box and get your shot off, okay? But I want you to think about being extremely direct. Every time I get the ball, can I score? Is there a chance to score? Is there a chance to help my team score? Is there a chance to get an assist? I'm always trying to play forward. Saying that, sometimes you can't play forward. Sometimes I receive the ball and there's three guys on me. I'm not just gonna turn into trouble because Dylan said to play forward. No, okay? You gotta know when to play forward and when to keep possession of that ball. Maybe I just play that one touch and then I go find some new space. Receive, okay, this guy's off me, now I can turn. Now I can dribble forward, now I can play that pass. But try to always go forward if you can. If you can, keep possession of the ball, try to go and get that ball again, and then play forward. Be extremely direct, go for goals at every opportunity possible. I think we can agree that there's some times when your teammates piss you off. They really frustrate you because maybe they're not playing quick enough, they're not playing smart enough, they're not playing hard enough, they're not playing with enough energy or intensity, they're not playing with enough urgency, okay? Certain things will frustrate you and it almost feels like you can't do anything about it. And maybe even worse, you start expressing that frustration verbally. You start yelling at them, you start putting your hands up in the air, moaning, groaning, what the hell are you doing? Getting really frustrated and showing this emotion, okay? But guess what? That isn't gonna make them play any better. Now I know like especially in like English or those UK countries and different countries, real hard working football countries, if a guy makes a mistake his teammates are usually like what the F are you doing man? They're all over him. They're verbally just tearing him apart and they think that that's going to make him play better. And for some players it might. Okay, but personally, I think there's a better way to motivate your teammates and make them play the way you want to play, and that is by leading by example. Okay, so if I want my teammates to play with more energy, with more intensity, I need to do that. I need to be pressing guys, I need to be closing the gaps down, I need to be getting in there really intense, going in hard for tackles. If my teammates see me doing that, then they're going to get a little pump of energy. They're going to say, hey, if he can do that, I can do that, or if he's going to do that for the team. I'm gonna do that for the team, okay? So instead of getting down on your teammates, lead by example. As well, when you're on the ball, if I'm on the ball, I'm making sharp touches, I'm playing quick passes, I'm moving off the ball, I'm demanding the ball, I'm really positive with my movement, with my talk, saying, yeah, give me the ball. Everything is sharp, it's quick, okay? It's gonna encourage, it's gonna force your teammates to play the same way, okay? If I play you a little one-two pass and I go into space and I'm really quick and sharp and you're super slow on the ball and you get tackled, well, that guy's gonna realize, okay, like he's doing something a lot different than what I'm doing. Okay, so instead of getting down on him, lead by example. Lead by example defensively with your pressing, with your intensity, with your closing down, how hard you go into tackles, that'll get your teammates energy up. And when you're on the ball, okay, your uh, movement, how quick you're playing, how direct you're playing, just the style of your play will influence your teammates. Also, communication is absolutely key. I can influence my teammates by the way I talk. Okay, if I'm super quiet and I don't even open my mouth, I really have no effect on my teammates. They don't really know what I want from them, okay? Now, don't confuse this. I'm not getting down on them. I'm not telling them, what are you doing? Do this. I'm just giving good verbal descriptive communication. So. I'm telling them where to play. I'm saying, yes, pass the ball this way. Yes, give it to Johnny. Yes, play quick, play simple, play simple. Yes, move the ball. Here I am, I'm open, I'm open, okay? This quick communication, just directing the play. Yes, move the ball, play inside, play to this specific guy. Take your space, turn, man on, no time, time. Okay, all this descriptive communication. If you're verbally talking, not only will you be more involved in the play, not only will you stand out and impress your coaches, you're actually gonna have more control over the way your teammates play. You're gonna make them sharper. You're gonna help them make quicker decisions. You're gonna get their energy up because you are you got that bright energy. It's contagious and your teammates will latch onto that and it will affect the way they play. Okay, final thing I wanna say about that is motivate your teammates, encourage them. Instead of saying, what the heck are you doing? Give them positive encouragement, say, hey, just play a bit simpler, just take a good, focus on your first touch and play quick, I know you can do better. Or when they do things good, extremely important, when they do things good, praise them. If they make a nice, quick receive and pass off the ball movement or they make a hard tackle, praise them. Be like, yes, fantastic, good job, keep it up, do that again. And they will be motivated, they'll be inspired because it felt good to get that praise from you and they'll wanna keep doing it. Okay, so when your teammates are frustrating you, when things aren't going your way, your team's not playing the way you want them to play, instead of moaning, groaning, getting frustrated, saying, oh, these guys never do anything right, blaming other people, take some responsibility and lead by example. I've shared this tip 
quite a few times. And honestly, I don't think enough of us are doing it. It's like the most basic tip, but it's the most powerful tip. It will help you score the most goals. It will help you be more effective in the attacking third. And that is just get into the right areas. Okay, scoring goals isn't about technique. It's not a, it is about technique. You have to have the technique to finish the goals off. But getting those chances, getting your opportunity to score those goals is all about movement and it's all about getting in the right areas, okay? Sadly, most of us, our teammate has this opportunity to score and we're just trotting up the field. We're just jogging, we're just watching him. Oh yeah, you got it, you got it, I hope he scores. Okay, get in there. Even if you think he's going to, if he, even if he's on a breakaway and you're 100% he's gonna score, sprint up there and look, boom. The goalie made a save and you tapped in a rebound, okay? It will never happen if you never get in the right areas. You will not score any goals if you don't get in the right areas. Just think about that idea. Scoring goals, it's not so much about technique. It's about getting in the right areas. So anytime there's an opportunity to score, someone's whipping a ball in the box, you need to be making that run in there. Or if I'm a midfielder, I need to be getting there. If I'm a fullback, I want to get in there, okay? If I'm a center back, I might have to balance, I might have to take care of my team, okay? But there's still opportunities for you. So anytime, especially if you're an attacking player, anytime there's a ball whipped into the box or there's a chance for someone to get a shot or we're moving forward, okay? Don't jog up the field, don't trot up the field, sprint into that space. That's how you're gonna get opportunities to score. Watch this, if I'm jogging into this space, this is easy for this guy to stay with me. If I'm just jogging there, yeah, 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 give me the ball, give me the ball, just jogging there, okay? It's so easy for him to defend me. If, instead, I realize there's an opportunity, give him a little push for some space, sprint into this area, okay? That's how you're gonna get your opportunities. But get into those areas, get into those areas with purpose, okay? So get into the box, get around the box. If your teammates have a chance to score, don't just watch, sprint. You have to be hungry and you have to realize that there could be an opportunity here. A lot of times a ball might get whipped across, it goes through everyone, okay? It goes through everyone, but the fullback wanted, he was hungry, he wanted to get involved, and it came out here and boom, he just tapped it in and got himself a goal. He would never get that if he was waiting back here and just watching his teammates play, saying, oh, I'm a defender, I just defend. Want to get involved, risk a bit, okay? Get in, into the box, make those forward runs, get into the right areas, but get into those areas with purpose. I guarantee, if you just understand that scoring goals isn't so much about technique, it's more about movement, it's more about getting into the right spots, you're going to score so many more goals this season. So please take that advice because not enough of us are using that idea and see what happens for you. I guarantee you're gonna see some great results. Before I end this video and send you on your way, send you to your next practice or your next game, I want you to understand that your ability to implement these ideas will determine how good you become and how fast you improve. 90% of players who watch this video will not do a single thing that I recommend in this video. They will just go back to their old habits, they'll have the same frustrations and the same pains and they'll play the same way. 10% of people, and I want you to be part of this 10%, who actually watch this video they watched it all the way through. They really thought about, okay, what am I doing in the game compared to what he's telling me to do and how can I make that change? And they actually apply what they learn. Next time they go on the field, they try to do all these things that we talked about. They will improve so much faster than their competition, so much faster than their opponents. So your ability to implement what you learn, not only my advice, but the advice that your coaches give you, the advice that your parents give you, the advice that your teammates give you, if you can take that knowledge and implement it into your game, put it into your game, you will improve faster than everyone else. The harsh truth is that most players, like I said in the very beginning, they cannot accept criticism. They are not open to new ideas. They think they know everything, and because of that, they will stay the same player that they are today for the rest of their lives. Okay, so if you wanna become better than everyone else, you wanna improve faster than everyone else, that all depends on your ability to take this information and apply it to your game the next time you play, but consistently. Keep coming back to this video, keep coming back to all these videos, listening to my advice, listening to your coach's advice, the advice of people that you respect, and actually asking yourself, am I actually doing these things, or am I doing the same things that I've always done? Okay, if you do something new, you're gonna get new results. If you do what you've always done, you're gonna get what you've always got.
Okay, so thank you once again for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I want you to go out of your way to share this video with players that you want to help improve. So if you've got some teammates, if you're a parent watching this video and you've got a kid, you've got some friends you know are passionate about soccer or football and you want to help them improve, share this video with them. Share it on your social media because it's a very powerful video and if we can get this video out there, it's going to improve the quality of football around the world and that's an incredible thing. So thanks for watching this video and I'll talk to you real soon.